Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Small Cap Discoveries conference call. Today on our call, we have back uh, William Trainer, the CEO of Grand West Transportation Group. Grand West trades on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol BUS and on the OTC under BUSXF. The company is trading at $2.64 with roughly 87 million shares outstanding or about a $228 million market cap. I'd now like to hand it over to Paul Andriola. Hey, thanks, Trevor. Uh, great to have Will back. Will, uh, it's been probably about five or six months since we had you on, and uh, a lot has changed since then. So great to have you back and, and looking forward to uh, getting some updates from you today. Great. Well, thanks for having me back. Um, listen, why don't we start for some of those that aren't familiar with uh, Grande West, uh, why don't you give us a, a short little summary of exactly what you guys do? Sure. Well, uh, I'm uh, William Trainer, President and CEO of uh, Grande West. We're a bus manufacturer. Our headquarters are out here just outside of Vancouver in the uh, Langley area. Uh, and we produce mid-size, uh, low floor transit buses, both for private and uh, public uh, applications. Fantastic. So um, obviously one of the big uh, moves in transportation over the last little while is the advent of uh, EV or electric vehicles. And you guys, uh, you got some updating to do on that. Um, but there, there's been some other uh, changes within the business. You've had some management changes. Um, you guys are looking at, at going to NASDAQ and a whole bunch of things. Why don't we, uh, why don't we start with some of the new additions to the team um, and uh, talk about some of the new, new players? Sure. Well, we're, we're getting set for some pretty major growth that we're anticipating in the U.S. And one of the recent uh, new uh, uh, gentleman that we brought on is a fellow by the name of Manuel Achadina. He's our new uh, chief operating officer. He's got a pretty amazing background. He was with the BC Ferries at one point and his last position uh, managing BC Transit, which is a, a pretty large powerhouse as well. Um, yeah, we're just uh, just strengthening the team and getting ready for the growth. And uh, he adds a, a, a lot to the, uh, to the mix that we're requiring. Fantastic. Now, I think another major step forward you guys had was you uh, increased your distribution uh, into the U.S. Um, and maybe a little talk about some of the, the infrastructure that you're sort of building out that way as far as the distribution. Sure. Well, for those that know the company, everybody realizes that we've done you know, exceptionally well on the Canadian side. We retain about a 90% market share uh, in the uh, mid-sized buses that we compete with in, uh, in Canada. And traditionally that was about 90% of our business was coming from the Canadian side. Our focus now is really, you know, how to grow the US and how, how to get that order book up in the US. So in order to do that, we, you know, we need to strengthen our, our sales uh, uh, team and uh, uh, our sales network. Uh, one of the recent uh, news releases that you've seen out there was uh, bringing on the ABC group uh, to help us uh, represent us in, in the US. These guys are a, a quite an amazing powerhouse. Uh, uh, they mostly are selling in the uh, motor coach industry, but um, they're focused in, uh, uh, they're focusing with our product uh, uh, in on the transit in the public uh, um, and private side. Their annual sales just for the motor coach industry is, is roughly around $500 million a year. So, you know, we're really looking to leverage off of their expertise and their customer relationships for growing uh, our product uh, in the U.S. Primarily, uh, you know, when we look at the EV and that, that's really where the big push is on right now. And we're seeing a lot of activity and tenders and uh, uh, inquiries on, on the EV. And if you're gonna be in the EV space, you really need to be in that California market. Uh, California is leading uh, the market uh, for EV sales, no, no question. Um, the ABC group, has three mega locations in California alone. So we're really uh, looking to get some, some good numbers out of the California market. We recently had a, a nice size tender close. It's called the CALAC, which is the California Association of Transit uh, uh, Agencies uh, in the state. Um, that that uh, has closed and we're, we're really looking to see that we're, we're on that bid. It's a, it's a menu style bid, but the numbers are, are pretty staggering. 
the numbers in California that they're anticipating uh, off of this, and this is really on the midsize of the smaller bus range, is 8,000 vehicles over a five-year period on a maximum and 3,000 on a minimum basis. So we really think we've positioned ourselves well, particularly you know, with our alliance with the, with the uh, ABC group uh, and our uh, entry into the uh, EV market. Well, give us a sense, like 8,000 vehicles, um, what, what's, what's that dollar-wise? Give us a, a, an idea. Well, it, it's staggering. Uh, you know, when you look at 8,000 vehicles, uh, you're probably talking in a neighborhood if you're on averaging $300,000 a vehicle, uh, you know, uh, $240 million worth of sales. Wow, wow. Um, so there, I mean, there, there's a ton of excitement around electronic vehicles, electric vehicles. Um, where are you guys, and I, I believe you call it the vicinity lightning. Um, yeah. where, where are we at with the, with the new EV bus? Well, it, it's come along extremely well. You know, we, uh, I think last time where I was on the show, you know, I mentioned that we we're in a development stage. We had, uh, we, we were developing the product and producing some of them. We really only announced it at that time. Since then, we, we actually have 25 units in production. We're looking to get the first units uh, actually landed in Canada here sometime in June. Out of that 25, uh, the activity level has been very high. We've actually secured a, a five bus order uh, down with one of the universities uh, in the US. So there's, there, there's good activity. The first five that come in, we're really trying to get them in here earlier this year, like I say, June. We really got one for a demonstration unit for Canada, two for demonstration units in the US, one that's required to go get some EPA testing, and we want to get one down and get it in the Altoona uh, queue for testing as well, so that we can meet some of these uh, Buy America criteria, uh, which one of them is the is the uh, Altoona test. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, maybe um, I think one of the things that was exciting uh, a while ago is the Altoona test that you guys did for your sort of your standard bus. Um, really was quite amazing. Your bus is, is a very high quality. Um, I, I'm guessing that we're expecting the same thing from the EV bus. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I think we got some very talented engineers uh, on our group here. Uh, you know, I remember when the first ones went through the Altoona test, our senior engineer just come in here and hugged me in my office. It was uh, quite amazing. We were best in class. So we're really looking to get that same sort of, uh, uh, you know, test results back on, on the EV model as well. Awesome. Um, why don't you give us a general sense of uh, where business is right now? How's, how's uh, business, uh, what you anticipate? I think I, I saw press release. You're expecting to, to move about 50 buses in Q1. Um, just give us a general sense of where you guys are business-wise. Sure. Well, over the next couple of quarters, uh, you're going to see some significant uh, revenue, uh, book revenue that we're delivering. You know, we're, we're looking to deliver 50 units, which is approximately $25 million worth of buses in, in Q1. We have the same thing booked for Q2. And then we have further orders. They're not going to be as robust, the, you know, Q3 and Q4 as, as these first couple of quarters, but uh, that's some pretty good revenue. And I think that you know, when I'm looking at the EV space and, and some of these startups that are coming in, you know, we are an established company with real revenues and, and revenues in place while we're transitioning into the EV. You know, the EV business is definitely going to take over the market, uh, you know, and, and I think we've positioned ourselves well with the, with the product that we're building. But there is a transition period. And, you know, we look at that as probably being on a five-year basis. So, um, we have solid revenue uh, while we're while we're transitioning. You know, I, I think it's an important point. Uh, so many of the uh, so, sort of startups uh, don't really have a product uh, and no real revenue. They're hoping that their EV uh, you know bus is their sort of their first uh, ticket. But you guys got a lot of experience dealing with buyers, parts, um, everything. You know, building a bus is going to be a complicated uh, process. Um, getting something done the first time is always the biggest challenge. So you guys are well past that. Um, why don't we, uh, so you, you guys have also mentioned you're looking at NASDAQ. Um, you know, what, uh, what, what's going on there and what, where do you think that you are in the process? Well, you, you know, we want to get a, a, a NASDAQ up listing. Uh, we have to finish our year-end financial statements, which should be completed by the end of this month. Uh, and then we'll apply uh, to uh, for the for the listing, and then it's really going to be up to the Nasdaq how long it really takes to get on there. But uh, you know, I do believe we meet all the qualifications. 
to get the uplisting. Um, really, we want to, you know, with our move into the U.S. and, and trying to gather our, more revenue in the U.S., we really need to have that uh, that Nasdaq listing to get uh, uh, to get the investor groups in the U.S. Uh, looking at us and, and being able to actually easily purchase our stock. Um, so, so what do you think investors should look out for sort of over the next six months, um, just in general? Obviously, you know, some good orders um, or, or some good book revenue in the quarters, but uh, anything else do you think that investors should keep an eye out for? Well, no, we, uh, just watch the news releases. We're, we're ex extremely excited about where the direction of the company is going, uh, you know, what we're doing, how we're getting there. Um, it's uh, it's it's a lot of hard work, but uh, it's uh, we should see a lot of news releases coming out in the next while. We have a, a lot of tenders. Like I said, we have a lot of activity that we've seen recently. So we don't news release uh, orders until we actually get the purchase order. But there's been a lot of activity this year, more so than uh, than definitely than last year. Mm -hmm. and, and you see, I mean, COVID now, you know, a lot of people are expecting it, um, sort of the restrictions, travel restrictions, and, you know, economies opening up. Um, do you see that having an impact on, on bus sales or, or you know, where, where do we sort of sit in the whole COVID process for you guys? Well, you, you know, I look at it and definitely it slowed down 2020. There's no question. And we're not the only ones that slowed everybody down. But going forward, I think we're in a very unique situation. You know, we have uh, uh, funding definitely from the federal government and from, uh, you know, the, the uh, new uh, Biden administration down in the U.S. But if you just look at just just a glance at the Canadian uh, um, infrastructure funding that's been available, you know, there's over $3 billion a year. Uh, designated for the, at least the next five years uh, for EV buses in, in Canada. You know, we're definitely well positioned. Uh, we should be see, a, a, you know, our fair share of that revenue definitely here. Um, and in the U.S., uh, there's just a lot more uh, uh, funding seems to be coming available daily. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, one question I was thinking about was um, you guys have really sort of captured, uh, call it the mid-sized bus uh, market for the traditional buses. Um, is it the same sort of approach you're taking for, for EV uh, buses or are you really going after, uh, you know, more of the market in the EV side? Yeah, you know, we're concentrating. The nice thing about the U.S. market is that we have both private and public uh, um, customers to sell to. Here in Canada, we primarily only sell to the public, which are the transit authorities. Yeah. Um, but in the U.S., it's, it's roughly 50-50, the market that we're going after. And again, you know, I think we have put together a bus that really hits the target uh, customer base. That, that's what we tried to do. You know, when we look at the, the, the bus in itself, you can go online and take a look at our presentation that we have, you know, on uh, vicinitybus.com. But, you know, we've engineered this bus really to, to be, um, to use automotive components, come in at, at extremely competitive pricing um, with off-the-shelf components uh, and user-friendly. I, th I think this is the key. You know, that battery pack that goes in there, keeping it a low-profile battery pack, keeping the, the batteries in the low floor for a low center of gravity, being able to charge easy with an onboard charger, much like a Tesla car, it really opens up the, the, the base for the customers. You know, we're targeting this vehicle to actually sell at around 350,000 US dollars. And if you compare that into the 40 foot bus, you know, a 40 foot bus is selling at a million dollars. And then you have to bring in at least on the first order, you have to budget in $500,000 for the infrastructure for the charging to come in to charge the vehicle. So with ours being user friendly, you can go in, it charges much like a Tesla car. So you've got, you've got any 240 volt single phase power outlet will charge this thing uh, on an overnight charge. Uh, yes, you can go fast charge on it and get it quicker, but you know, the primarily it, it'll charge overnight and then go out and do 240, 250 kilometers on a, on a single charge. You can get higher charges with uh, distance with extended battery packs, but being user friendly, I think this is what's going to be key for us getting into the marketplace. Yeah, and one thing I think um, I remember is that you guys you guys haven't really built anything too proprietary. Some of the major components are um, you know well known brands that you can depend on that have already you know a lot of viability and sort of you know proof in the pudding. Um, 
isn't that the case? Maybe, maybe mention some of the, the groups you're working with to, to make this possible. Yeah, so when we looked at ours, we said, okay, the battery, start with the batteries. We've got a nice uh, supply agreement with BMW. We chose BMW because the battery pack's a lot thinner. It fits into the low floor section of the bus, whereas the competition, a lot of them have looked and, and uh, 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 you know, taken out their engines and transmissions and put a big motor in there. And then where are they going to put the batteries? They're stuck putting them on a roof, which is not ideal because it's top heavy. So the, you know, we start with a battery pack. We engineered it to go into the low floor section of the bus. And then, as I said, with the charger. But one of the other key things that we've done on our smaller vehicle is we've engineered it to stay under 22,500 GVW. And the reason for that is we can, we can put a standard hydraulic brake system on it, much like the school buses have. So it's ease of use. So the, the, the shuttle operators or, or standard drivers can use it without a, you know, a commercial air brake ticket on it. Uh, these are, these are going to be some of the key points that are going to, uh, you know, enhance our, our product and, uh, and our um, competitiveness in the marketplace. So, so it's not like having a Ferrari where you have to have one specialized mechanic in the whole town that knows how to fix the Ferrari. You guys, uh, exactly. You guys can bring yeah. in uh, a lot of, uh, you know, a um, lot of uh, local, local, lower talent to get stuff done. That's awesome. Um, there's a couple questions that come in here. I'll, I'll fire these off. Um, so I've got one. Can the company take orders through the Buy America program before the U.S. plant is built and operational? Yes, and that that is key. Um, a lot of people are entering the EV market space. Some of our competitors are. Very few are tested. The only buses that are really tested are the larger ones, some of the 40 foot. So when we're bidding uh, tenders, and remember that's only for, for US FTA funded projects, um, you, can, uh, you, you can put on your, uh, uh, um, you can put down Altoona test pending, and then you'd have to supply it upon delivery of the bus mm -hmm. before you deliver the bus. That's why, uh, as I stated, the first five that come in here, we want to get one down and get it in the uh, queue. But also, on the uh, on the Buy America side, the bus was designed to meet the Buy America qualifications, which is 70% U.S. content. We have a factory in the U.S. for assembly, and the only thing we're going to be missing is really that that Altoona test. Uh, perfect, perfect. And then a question around um, EV buses in cold weather. How does how would one of your buses hold up in? Uh, you know, the, the frigid north that we have here in some places in the U.S.? Well, again, we've tried to stay to a nice proven components, much like the battery packs. Uh, our batteries are actually cooled with Freon. So it's the same gas that's in your, your air conditioning unit in your car, where a lot of the commercial batteries are cooled with, uh, you know, a water glycol mixture. And uh, I think I know where you're, what your caller is going with. There has been some, some difficulty with some of the other buses operating in extreme cold conditions. But because of the design of ours, we're not anticipating any, any problems with cold weather. Okay, fantastic. Um, so listen, what, one guy suggests we, we double check our math because when he did his math, he says $300,000 per bus per times 8,000. Uh, buses is actually 2.4 billion dollars. So oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so you're only off by one zero. <laughs> <Very good point. laughs> uh, so yeah, thank uh, you. If, if you're, if you're, you know, if uh, your, your accountant will be very, very busy. If, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like um, no, this is great. Uh, so, it, well, I mean, it sounds like a, a lot of progress over the last little while. Um, what, what what's keeping you up at night right now? What's keep my eye? I'm working my <laughs> butt off, <laughs> so I actually sleep very well at night. I'm yeah. usually starting in here at six and finishing at six these days. It's uh, you know it's pretty drooling, uh, grueling getting onto uh, the Nasdaq. So uh, there's a lot of work in here. Uh, I've never shied away from that, nor is my team. But uh, no, I sleep well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, listen, listen, I, I've, I've come to know you and I know your team works extremely hard. So you're, I imagine you're very tired by the time you get home. So um, definitely hats off for that. Um, what, what have I missed? What, what should have I asked you or what things do you think uh, our listeners should uh, uh, come away with today that, that we haven't talked about? 
Well, I, no, if I had to summarize it up, you know, I, I would say, you know, we are an established brand, an established company, and we have real revenues as we go forward. And I think that, uh, you know, that's what really uh, it separates us from a lot of these SPACs that are coming on. You know, they're, they're looking at generating uh, 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 sales um, on projections, and we're actually delivering right now. Yeah, you know, hats off. Again, what I love about you guys is you've, you've, you've already done this before. You, you've built these, uh, you know, tremendous bus, uh, gotten good traction, and now it's just a different version of a bus, really. So um, I think you guys are, uh, you know, miles ahead of the competition. Uh, look, if anybody wants more information, um, maybe a website that, uh, that's best to get the, the information they're looking for. Great. No, no, what's, what's the website address? Oh, sorry, I didn't hear that. <laughs> uh, if you want more information, the best is really ir at uh, grandewest.com. Okay, perfect. Um, I, I, think, I think we've wrapped up. Uh, I know uh, you guys are always busy, so I'm sure in a few months we'll want to catch up again and, uh, and find out where you, guys are, um, where you guys have landed. But, um, you know, con continued uh, success. Congratulations on what you've done so far, and uh, we certainly look forward to seeing you uh, trading on NASDAQ. Great. Well, thanks, and thanks for having me today, Paul. Appreciate awesome. it. Thank you, Will. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Bye now.